Hey guys, so last time we talked about the binomial basics, kind of going over what's a success, failure, probabilities associated with them too as well. So now let's move on to the formula. So the formula is basically an easy way for us to go ahead and find these binomial probabilities. Um, but it's a little complicated. So here we, it looks very scary. We have a C in there somewhere. There's P's raised to certain powers, all that crazy stuff. So before we dive into the binomial formula, Let's break down the components to get a better understanding of how it all works. So when looking at two independent events occurring simultaneously, so again, there's, you know, for example, flipping a quarter, you flip heads, you flip heads again, you flip tails. So those are independent events occurring one after another. Mm -hmm. So there might be multiple ways that this can happen. So you flip a quarter four times, write out all the possible ways you can end up with exactly two heads. Mm -hmm. So one way you can end up with two heads is just head, head, tail, tail, right? Now, try to think of some other ways we can do this. So, order-wise, right? So we can get maybe the second heads falls back to the third spot. And then, following that, we move to the end, right? So the last head is on the end of the, the series of events. And so, another way we can do this is maybe the heads isn't first. So the tails, heads, heads, tails. Tails, head, tail, head. And also, the heads being the second two. Tail, tail, heads, heads. Does that make sense? So technically there's mm. six different possibilities for us to get two heads out of six. Does that make sense? And that just has to do with the order. But we have to take those into account because those are also outcomes within our sample space, right? So if we're trying to say two heads, that's an event that includes six outcomes from our total sample space. Does that make sense? So now, it's easy to say that once more trials are thrown into the mix, it kind of gets difficult thinking about all the possible ways that certain events can happen together. So for example, if I told you 10, poss 10 um, quarters that we're flipping, or flipping a quarter 10 times, how many ways can we get three heads? That gets very messy, very complicated to think about. So instead of doing that, we use the combination function to help us determine all these possible ways that a series of events can happen. So. We have the breakdown of the variables here. So x is, again, number of successes. And remember, success is not anything good. It could be, you know, killing a baby or something being defective or broken or whatever the case may be. Whatever we're interested in, that's our success. The other outcome, remember, because binomial only has two. So we have success, and then we also have the failure. But here we're only interested in the number of successes. And also, n is the number of trials. So n, remember, again, if we're answering a, an exam, right? So we have a bunch of questions. The number of questions that we have to get right is the number of trials that we have. Um, if we're flipping quarters, the number of heads that we end up with, that's our successes. But flipping the quarters, each time we flip them, that's the number of trials. So another way you can represent that is the parentheses with n and, k on, um, n and x on bottom. And so we end up with n factorial. So that little exclamation point is a factorial. Now let me break that down real quick. So essentially, if our number of trials was 5, a factorial, all it really is is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So it basically tells us multiply each number and go down from there. Does that make sense? So let's try one more. So let's say 2 factorial, what would that be? It would be 2 times 1, right? Cool. So let's go ahead and apply this. We have a quick example right here. So you flip a quarter six times. How many different ways can you end up with exactly two heads? So n, remember, is our number of trials. So we have 6c. And then what's the number of successes that we want? So we see that heads is our success. And so two heads is going to be our x, right? So 2. And that breaks down simply into 6 factorial over 2 factorial times 4 minus 2 factorial. I'm sorry, 6 minus 2, getting ahead of myself. <laughs> That's going to give us 4 in the bottom. So it's 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 2 times 1. And then this ends up being 4, right? So 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So now how do we do this? Essentially, things can cancel out. And when things cancel out, basically because we have something on top that we also have on bottom. So what do we have on top that we also have on bottom? We have a bunch of numbers, actually. So we have the 4 and 4, right? 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, 1. All gone. 
So once we basically collapse all those other ones, the rubble, whatever's left over, kind of moves over. And we get equals 6 times 5 over 2 times 1. So 6 times 5 is 30. And then 2 times 1 is 2. So we end up with 15 possibilities. So 15 possible ways this can happen. That's pretty intense, right? So imagine trying to write out that many. And also, imagine we flip 10 quarters. I'm mean, sorry, we flipped a quarter 10 times. Again, it's very easy to see how these things can get complicated. And so the combination function serves as a way for us to quickly, very simply get what are the possible ways these two events can happen. Cool? So now let's talk about the multiplication rule. So the multiplication rule, we've seen this before, and we knew that it can be applied for multiple events, right? So before we saw how the multiplication rule can be applied, here again we see that for independent events, it's just multiplying the corresponding probabilities to each event. So the probability of multiple events happening is simply the product of their probabilities. So let's go ahead and try this out. So you're taking a true false quest quiz with 10 questions. What's the, the probability of guessing all of them correct? So you have to think to yourself, what's the probability of me getting the first one correct? So probability of getting the first times probability. So probability of all correct is the probability of the first being correct, the second times the third, etc., all the way to the probability of the tenth one being correct. Right? So how do we do this? What's the probability of me getting the first one correct? If it's true false, should be 50%, right? Or half. Times 0 0.5, times 0 0.5, times 0 0.5. Right? So we're multiplying a half each time because the probability of me getting the first one correct or not doesn't really affect the probability of the second one being correct or not. So these are, again, independent events, right? And so multiply 0 0.5 10 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so, look at me, 6. <laughs> it's hard to write it like that. 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. But again, this gets very annoying, right? So if we're talking about a, a long string of events, this could get really tedious to write it over and over again. So the way we do this to make it simpler for ourselves is 0.5 to the 10th power, right? Or, let me go ahead and write this in a special way. The probability of success times to the number of successes power, right? So what's our probability of getting a question right? How many times do we want to get that question right? Does that make sense? So that's our basic kind of talking about the binomial formula, breaking it down very simply. And so now let's go ahead and move on to our next video. But remember, when we were talking about this problem here, we found the probability very simply. But are there more ways for us to get all the questions correct? No, right? So there's only one way for us to get all of them correct. It's that it's true, true, true. I mean, I'm sorry. That it's correct, 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 correct over and over again, all the way for the 10 problems, right? So we have to go ahead and make sure that we count all possible ways things can happen. So for example, if I said, what's the probability of you getting two wrong? So we could have done this and said, okay, this many right times the probability raised to the power of how many we want to get wrong, but we haven't taken into account all the possible ways. So that's how the combination and also the multiplication will come together and give us this binomial formula. So let's go ahead and move on to the next video and we'll practice on that.